Hey everyone, welcome back to Ormsby Farm. So, on today's vlog, um, we have a lot going on. We're moving chickens out to their part-time at Brooder um, until they go out to the coop. Um, I'm getting stuff ready for farmer's markets. We're finishing up um, on the winemaking and letting it sit for a while. And I'm gonna be clearing off some of the eggs and putting those up. So let's go ahead and get into the intro because we have a busy, busy day and I'm taking y'all along with me. I'm coming home. All righty, so we're heading out to the warehouse. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that sound. It was going to pick up on the cameras, but those are the cicadas, um, which is really weird. It's the weirdest sound, y'all. Um, uh, just checking on my tomato plants. They're all looking good. They're ready to go into the ground. They're over it. Um, which will be next week. I'll be putting them in next week. I'll take you up to the garden after I show you around the warehouse of where we're putting the chickens um, because I finally was not lazy and pulled up the garden and laid down the fertilizer and all that good stuff. So now he'll be just tilling, putting the ground cover back down, the trellises up and planting the babies in the ground. And then that will be garden 2024, check. Because there's a lot of projects that have to be done, y'all. And I guess I could say, because I'm gonna say it out loud for myself to hear, is whenever you feel like you're a little overwhelmed, write it down and just take it one at a time. Uh, because that's what I've had to do, honestly. Yeah. All right, so we're in the warehouse. We're excited because there is electricity hooked back up and they hooked that thing, um, a box up, because uh, shortly in about 20 days, we're going to have baby turkeys. Eh? And probably after a week or two weeks, we'll bring them out here and let them join the chickens. Eh? Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I have a tarp. I'm gonna lay down the tarp. We're gonna put the wood chips on top of it and then we'll put that wire brooder that I had last year. I'll try to show a picture or a video here of that. Um, and the, the babies will move out here and will stay out in this shed um, that does have windows and ventilation, y'all. Um, probably for another four, four weeks maybe, until they're big enough to go out to the coop with the other chickens. And so I know which ones are girls and which ones are boys. Because we're not keeping no more boys. No more boys, only girls. Um, and so, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So right now, I'm gonna put you down. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lay down the, um, the tarp. I learned this trick um, from my friend Monica over at Land Promise Land Ranch. Y'all, when I tell you, it is so simple cleanup. All you do is bunch it up and go toss it in the compost. Thank you, Monica, for that tip. Yeah. Look who's decided to join me. I hope I didn't, you know, break into her very busy, busy schedule. Do you want to stand on there or not? Yeah. Stand on there. All right. Well, we've got those pieces. Tart down. Well, we've got those pieces of cardboard that we'll have to put on the side. I, I think they've gotten big enough where they're not going to get through it. Well, well, let's check them and see because that would be not good. <laughs> All right, y'all, we got this piece of crap set up. Now we're getting wood chips, and then we'll go get the babies. It'll be kind of like an update, y'all. Get to see they've gotten big, they've gotten smelly. It's time for them to get the hell out of the house.
Now the babies get to have a little bit of outside time while we're finishing getting everything ready. Right? Yeah, I like a little bit of sun. Alrighty, so we're now inside. Everything's set up. Oh, it's hot. I'm sweating already, yeah? Um, and again, y'all would have seen it on a different video. I'll leave it up here. But I'm assuming, because I watched the video, that when they were one and two weeks old, the longer feathers were the girls, or uh, wing feathers, and the shorter ones were the boys, which gave me three girls. Knock on wood. And then I don't know the turkeys yet. I have three turkeys. Huh? Um, but we're about to, I'll, about to sh I'll show you them on the camera what, before I put them in. I'm going to put them closer to the water, even though they know, uh, I guess the smell. Can you smell water? I don't know how they know. They just know where the water is. They know where the food is by now. They're about f maybe four or five weeks. I'm going to sneeze. So let's go ahead and I'm going to lift off the top and we're going to grab some and start putting them in. Huh? Oh, mom. Turkey. That's a turkey, too. I wish you would have just let me do it. Golly. And I have it on camera. Oh. What are the little chick chicks? Another kick chick. Final chick chick. This was the one in the one day old video. So say hello to the camera. Where's the camera? Over here. Say hello. Hey, I like They're all in. Now I'm going to show you down at the bottom how everybody's looking. It's pretty big. We're going to watch them for a minute. They're, they're close to being older. Funny story is when we first had the first batch of them, um, our one Coco, who you see on many of the videos, um, decided she was going to squeeze through. And um, I think they're too big now to squeeze through most of them. Uh, but we're going to watch them for a second and make sure they're, they don't squeeze through. So I'll show you what they look like. They all really don't even know what to do. I don't know. I know how to get to the water. Alrighty, well, they drank water, they've eaten food. Now, I have to go clean out this tub to get it ready for the baby turkeys when they hatch in about 20 days. And I need to start on some breads. So I'm excited because I'm going to take you with me and we're going to do a um, very simple, easy, basic Amish sandwich bread. Um, but yeah, let's go get that done. Alrighty, y'all. So this is my very, 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 very simple base um, white Amish sandwich bread recipe. Um, I have added uh, cinnamon and raisin to it. I have added stuff to make an Italian oven cheese. I have done many different flavors, but all of it is the base that I'm about to share with you now. So... Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to proof my yeast in here, and that is a fourth and an eighth of a cup of, uh, sugar is what I'm going to start. So, uh, this is going to make two loaves of bread. This recipe that I'm doing today is two loaves of bread. So a fourth and an eighth cup of sugar. One, two. All right. Now we're going to do two tablespoons of yeast on top to the sugar, because that's what it wants to eat. Nom, 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 nom. So I'm going to do two tablespoons. One, two. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to do a fourth and an eighth of a cup of your bread flour. Now, y'all, I've done it many different ways. I've done it with the whole wheat flour. I've done it with all-purpose flour. It just doesn't turn out the same than it does with unbleached uh bread flour. Um, I will leave some suggestions down below of what I've used. King Arthur is a really good one. Um, I get mine in major, major bulk. So um, I, I can't, I don't even really want to leave a link for that because it is, I think I do like 150 pounds at a time. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a fourth and an eighth now on top of this in three, two. All right. So now what I'm going to do with the same thing to rinse it off that I've been using is I'm going to put 
lukewarm water. I just turned my faucet to hot and get two cups. So eight of these will go in here, two cups, and then we're gonna mix it all up and then we're gonna let it sit. But let me go ahead and I'm going to put this hot water um, in it right now and magically, ooh. All right, y'all. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put this, the whisk attachment onto my KitchenAid. Y'all, this was um, a gift of a family friend who has since passed gave this to me. I've had it for about three farmer's market seasons and I am praying that it lasts this one and then we'll look into getting a new one um, next <laughs> farmer's market season because they're so expensive and I'm like, please baby, please stay good with me. Um, but I wanted to also say before I started mixing this, the reason that I do hot water from the tap is because you don't want super, super hot water um, that's going to kill your yeast, but you don't want cold water um, that is not going to activate it. So I always do um, the hot of what the hot will go um, and then it always turns out good. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a good mix. So now I'm going to let it sit uncovered, uncovered y'all. For 10 minutes so we'll come back and you're going to see that it's very bubbly it's going to look foamy and that's a good thing that means that your yeast is ready to rock and roll ready to play ready to get down for the get down okay bam she's ready she ready you see it's a little foamy i don't know if you can really see yeah see she nice and foamy on the type frothy um kind of like you just poured like a beer or something or a soda um, the foam that comes. That's what you're looking for. So now we're going to do a fourth of a cup. We're pretty much staying in this fourth of a cup for a good bit. Um, a fourth of a cup of oil. Now, I have used many different types of oils. What I have noticed works the best. This is my preference. Um, and I, this is non-GMO. Or this is GMO. So if you're looking for a non-GMO thing, this is not it. Uh, vegetable oil. Vegetable oil does the least amount of taste uh, oil-wise. I've used olive oil. I use avocado oil. Um, what else have I used? Um, that's it. Vegetable oil leaves the least amount of aftertaste. So right here, I'm going to go three, two. Yep, so I've got the oil in there. Now what I'm going to do is about four and a half cups to five cups of bread flour and then we're going to mix her up all right now that in there i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to add in the um bread hook and we're just going to let her mix for a bit it will form into a ball i will come back and show you what you're looking for now if it is a little too sticky you can always add up to a half a cup more of the flour but don't do it all at once do a little bit at a time until you get the consistency that you want to see that i'm about to show you here in a youtube second literally a youtube second one thing that you're going to notice is it's going to start cleaning itself around the the edges so you don't have to clear it out i do this when i'm just making bread for me this is a one bowl kind of recipe so we're still going to let it turn it's going to start clearing away and then it's going to stop forming a nice little chunky dough see it's already pulling away from the side so that's a good sign all right y'all see how it literally is nice not too sticky but squishy, firm, this is what you're looking for. So do this, and now I'm just gonna turn it on low and let it knead it for about, let's just say five minutes. Let's do five minutes. Um, and then we'll transfer it to another bowl because I have to do another six batches of this. Again, normally I would do this in the same bowl that I mix it in, but because I have so many batches to do today, we're doing in separate bowls. But what you wanna do is put a little bit of oil in there just so it doesn't stick. All right, once you've oiled your, your bowl right here, I usually use the leftover on my hands because you're going to pull the loaf of bread all the way over and tuck it inside of each other. Hopefully, y'all can see this on the camera. Okay, good. I pinch it at the ends, and then I slap it in here, and we're going to cover it with a tea towel for 30 minutes. So what I forgot to tell you is after you let your dough ball rest for 30 minutes, you're going to punch it down. I'm a little bit ahead of the game, um, but you're gonna punch it down and you're gonna repeat twice. You're gonna do that so an hour and a half. Once that hour and a half is done, you've punched it down twice now, you're gonna form it into your bread pans. 
Let it rise halfway and then bake in a 350 degree oven for 26 minutes and it will turn into these beauties. Look how pretty they are. They're so delicious. I have um, another batch of our uh, version of Italian urban cheese going right. But let's go ahead and let's head up and check on all the chickens. That way I can show you what the garden is looking like. Oh, it's hot, y'all. I don't know if y'all can still hear them. The cicadas is going. You know that they sit underneath the ground or are hatched underneath the ground every 17 years. And then they last for about a month, about four weeks, three to four weeks. And then they die. So it has been so interesting going outside and hearing that because it sounds like a semi. But nope, it's just bugs. All right, we're heading over to the baby babies to see how they're doing. Let's see. Let me put them back in. Well, that's a bummer. They're getting through the slot like I thought they would. They're, I guess they're not quite big enough yet to not get through the slot. And this time it was the turkeys. The turkeys are usually like really stupid and won't try any of that, but it was both the turkeys. One's coming over here like, yeah, you want me to show you how stupid I am again? So we're gonna have to put a little base at the bottom. Lord have mercy. All right, let's go to the big chickens. I have some little screen sheets that I think I'm gonna put around to keep them in until they're big enough. But them things, them little tricky things. So um, guess who was outside of the cage? Yeah, okay. Two of the turkeys just sitting there, just chilling. That or I'm gonna look for some screen. All right, y'all, so here's what has been done with the garden so far. So now basically what I did is I fertilized it. I pulled up the ground cover, which they're all over here. Um, I fertilized and I put down a seven dust, which is good and it's healthy for plants, um, but it kills the bugs. And I did have a bug problem last year. So um, that's done. Really, the next kind of step is to be ready for the farmer's market. So. It's market day, y'all. So let's go ahead and head over to the market. I'm coming home.